afternoon, everyone. My name is Priya Shineki, and I welcome you all on behalf of you and WACOM to what we hope will be an engaging webinar for you all on gig economy and HR compliance by Ms. Nabumnita Majumdar. As we all know, the world is in lockdown because of the COVID pandemic. Working from home has taken on a new meaning. While there are many social changes and a lot of sad and crazy stuff going on in the world, our work processes have also changed a lot. Ms. Nabumita will be discussing about the gig economy and how we navigate through and manage the hybrid workforce. Ms. Mazumdar is the winner of 100 Women Achievers Award by Ministry of Women and Child Development India. She has been awarded various accolades and was among top 25 influential women on Twitter, top 20 HR influencers by SHRM India, and top 100 tech influencers. She helps companies scale up their businesses and turn around earning million dollar revenues and is regarded as one of the most uh, prominent voices for future of work, HR, and women and child empowerment in India. She is on board to eminent startup communities as advisor and mentor. She builds technology products and communities ranking first in the world and works closely with organizations such as United Nation and ICT, promoting women's education in technology and management. Nabomita.com is a platform to evangelize causes and issues such as technology, artificial intelligence, future of work, investment, startups, employer branding, women empowerment, entrepreneurship, gender diversity, and equal pay. I would also like to thank Wacom for supporting this webinar. Wacom is also playing a huge role in helping with the transition from work from home through their amazing range of products like Wacom One and Intuos Pro, which are a must-have equipment in your work from home office setup. Uh, Ma'am, thank you so much for joining us. I request you to now take over and share your thoughts. Very good afternoon and thank you so much for, um, okay, but in my screen, it's all locked up. Anyhow, um, I can only see Priyanshi's face a little and I can't see anything else. So, uh, well, this is the new normal. You plan things, you prepare, but you do not know how things will go ahead in the, in the last moment. <laughs> Welcome to the new normal. And uh, yes, um, today I wanted to share you a view to um, what the world was, what the world was planning till January 2020, and then suddenly what happened, and now what are we heading towards? In terms of, okay, that's exactly what we are heading towards, a fall. Okay, um, let's uh, look at a, a situation wherein a few months back, we were all working about one thing in particular, and that's all about uh, bots taking away our jobs. So uh, without any ado, let me just quickly start with my presentation. I hope the screen sharing will work. Uh, to everybody who's attending the session, have you already voted for this? Okay, everybody is working. 66% remote, 33% between choice and remote, 20% on premise. Excellent. So this is exactly almost in league with what our, um, our um, data says, says right? Uh, during, uh, I mean, uh, once this pandemic situation started, we, we got into a initiative and we did our own research and we realized that even after the lockdown four, lockdown five, or we do not know how many lockdowns, companies are looking at not more than 30% uh, employers, employees at the uh, premise at a given point of time. So what you have what you have uh, voted is exactly uh, what you, what we are seeing. Yes, uh, right now we are in a situation. Yes, thank you so much, Rajesh. This is the um, this is the uh, screen that I wanted to talk about. Future of work. I hope everyone can see it. So um, the yellow world, as as I already explained, as I was explaining, that the world which makes the product for the future, for a product for human beings, and how why are they different from the other three worlds? Because the yellow world has uh, a product. Is everything okay? Am I audible? I could just hear some sound. I hope I'm audible. Okay, let me go ahead with the session. So uh, the yellow world. Ma'am, please continue. You are audible and it's going very perfectly. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. So the yellow world uh, 
creates product which is for the human world and such as you have an uh, Ola app and that app allows you to choose whether your car will be driven by a machine, a robo, it will be an auto-driven car or a woman is going to drive your car or a transgender is going to drive your car or a man if he's still driving the car or a refrigerator which tells you what your current body metabolic rate rate is even before you open the door so suggest what you should be eating in the, from the available contents inside so that's the yellow world which is the futuristic world which is one of the product from the yellow world let me also quote that there is an uh, salt dispenser an ai based salt dispenser which the moment which has that capability of identifying the food that you are using the salt, dis salt dispenser for and then suddenly before you uh, before you start dispensing the salt this dispenser decides how much salt should go into your pasta pizza or your uh, food whatever that you are eating so that's the yellow world we are talking about rajesh next slide please so uh, managing business in a post covid situation this is the first month right in the uh, first month we were we were in a panic stricken mode we did not know what exactly is happening we did not know what would be the exact timeline for it we were just uh, we were just interested to get out of it so uh, in uh, in that kind of a panic mode we were quickly taking decisions we were uh, quickly identifying situations and we were not really thinking for a three month three years or even a 30 year cycle right too long to think about it we can understand then came the reimagine phase which was the next three months when we realized that the lockdown is not just for a weekend or a sunday or it is not just for a month it is going to be a longer issue because the vaccine would take time to come in until the vaccine is in we do not really have an government uh, order to get back into the exact kind of business uh, mobility that we had so that came with that came a complete um, a complete change in our thought processes and then came the reinforced state wherein uh, we were trying to get ahead of certain areas that we had already seen for the last three four months and uh, yes a uh, certain situation like such as being uh, cash trapped or suddenly um, suddenly decreasing the workforce all these things were almost past past us so the reinforcement state actually had the real investment, the real engagement, and the real, real countering the situation. Finally, rebound. Rebound was uh, definitely where we are right now. Every business is trying to get back. We're using the best kind of opportunities, best kind of procedures uh, that, that is available. To make this situation uh, a little more relevant, let me tell you a story, a real life story. What happened was this company that I have, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be a, a, a part of, I know the founder, who uh, is into an entirely tech, tech development. The first month, right, when the, uh, when the announcement was made and the world was sent into quarantine, they almost had a product ready, ready to be shipped. At that point of time, they had all their, um, all their developers paying, getting paid well, all geared up, people on site everywhere things happening in full doom suddenly the um, announcement gets everything into a halt and the client declines the contract they they completely cancel the co contract saying that they would not be requiring this product for now till the further notice so what did the founder that do he was definitely in a panic stricken mood. The employees were extremely demotivated. Sudden cash, it is not a cash trap, sudden absence of cash from the system. So we got the employees and almost everybody in the, in the organization over calls. And we had a war room ses 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 session wherein the employees were asked that in given that condition that we have we already have a product which can be shipped probably tomorrow by 4 a.m in the morning we do not have a client for it we are 
we have this amount of cash reserve which which requires us to pay for the technology which requires us to pay for you we cannot have the offices open now so in spite of that there would be infrastructural costs that we have to incur given all these expenses what best can be done how what can we do and how can we cover up these scenarios the developers right the employees they came up with suggestion that well we have we already have a product which is good for the market one client may not take it can we go back can we go back to a dashboard and create a product which is uh, which is less customized and ready for a larger audience and then and then present it because right now being everybody being in quarantine the cost of pilot is going to be zero so let's at least try out let's figure out if there is a market for it how the product performs and uh, let's take a three months view the cash reserves were e equally distributed amongst the areas that they identified how best can the expenses and the uh, and and whatever reserve that can, that we can save at that point of time interestingly since the cost of piloting was zero and every company definitely had to run their processes run run the systems there were a lot more takers than normal and eventually in three months time the reimagined phase they had many more clients ready to sign in for that product at a given terms and condition so uh, obviously the reinforced by the reinforced stage they are working uh, on the beta uh, on the beta part for the product and obviously they are far better uh, far better position than they were working for the for the client in in the month of march rebound would be even bigger so that's the business cycle i'm talking about rajesh could you take us to the next slide please this is the growth curve so uh, obviously uh, this shows the market uh, responsiveness this shows the cash is cash available in the market this shows essentially the entire uh, industry how it was responding so from res response state in the first of uh, i mean the first month where the quarantine would decline declared we had a fall but from reimagine just as you remember the story of the company that i said the dev did the product company there was an upward curve rajesh next slide like please ah so these were these are the few pointed approach that worked for most of the companies who made this entire lockdown work for them so first is obviously surviving the fall in consumerism during um, lockdown recovering the businesses post lockdown preparing the organization for the for a eminent global recession ensuring stabilization and growth during recession all these were the four chief areas in terms of business processes we are not yet thinking talking in terms of hr but business processes which had the pointed approach and the entire strategy was set for it rajesh next slide please these were few top global trends i wanted to share it with you i'm sure y'all being a part of all these segments certain segments did show a rise right such as fintech uh, technology they were in the upswing because companies going uh, into lockdown essentially required them to uh, actually uh, re i mean rethink their entire process of um, process of delivery which is where the digital method the technology usage increased however certain sector segments such as uh, services as we know the the, uh, the to travel all those segments were badly affected fmcg however showed a um, a big a big surprise element in there uh, though we had though we have the global trends on the screen i would want to tell you a story in case you haven't heard of it palaji in their uh, 86 years of uh, more than 80 plus years of um, operation suddenly received received their highest revenue since the lockdown what happened do you remember few months back palaji was almost on the verge of closing down and people across india was really sad that the memories of the favorite palaji is going to go away because the companies suddenly realized that the consumer segment had moved onto the uh, onto the product which is seemingly better presented or better placed which is why they do not have much future in the biscuit segment interestingly once the lockdown started 
apology found its real meaning in place of a biscuit apology is actually defined as a food which is available in a 10 rupees packet so the immigrants people who were traveling bought apology as a ready made food ready to eat food in quantities the ngos uh, comp- co- corporates every organization who were distributing free food were including apology in all their uh, food packets this increased the consumption so high that their entire revenue for their 80 plus year was surpassed in that particular lockdown situation isn't this a isn't this an interesting area wherein a company who that was almost on the verge of closing down was actually defined by the user end user and had the uh, and could get the revenue up so much that they are actually rethinking in terms of, of obviously how their product is positioned uh it's actually not a a comfort food it is act, it is actually a survival food so uh with apology story i leave you there obviously amol another story wherein once the lockdown was uh, declared the, the ceo to the to the company suddenly realized that he needs to make milk available everywhere so he called for a um, for a quick um, meeting with all his top leaders and made sure that the distribution is so high that it surpasses the demand so they made the supply stronger than the demand which is why even amul have a very strong revenue story since the lockdown started uh, that that definitely rounds up how the fmcg segment is do, uh, is doing but essentially what i see from all these two stories is you need to rethink you need to under, identify every uh, disruption every opportunity that a disruption can bring in which is why the revenue of your company can actually uh, see a, see the new light of the day just as that product development company had seen next slide please please rajesh now we come to the real area gig economy and hr compliance interestingly future of work and gig economy were two um terms that were widely used however since the lockdown what exactly was gig economy let me first take that gig economy is contingency workforce right people who are ready to uh, who are in a plug and play mode who can who can deliver the job right there who have the expertise to get going the moment you give them the job they perform their uh, they deliver the role and then they move on to the next one the interesting the interesting area was it was considered to be a portfolio career for the people in the gig economy however the lockdown has completely redefined the concept of gig economy because we have moved into a situation wherein we find the entire concept of hybrid workforce what is hybrid workforce essentially if you if you google any paper for on hybrid workforce which was published on uh, till january 2020 <coughs> sorry the paper would include hybrid workforce as man and machine march 2020 have an entirely new definition for high hybrid workforce which is uh, definitely remote and on site employees going forward what will be the definition of work- workforce will it remain the a hybrid workforce will it just remain to the on site and off site employees or will it remain on site off site and ha- machine let's look into it obviously hr compliance is an area which requires a huge amount of work done we'll get into it rajesh next slide please ha the human cloud okay right in the beginning of this presentation you also saw a um, demonstration which was actually not planned but we still got got into it wherein we had a collaboration of three people sitting in three different areas to deliver a job that's exactly how human cloud works that's exactly how team works and that's exactly how the delivery is happening these days uh, what are the top trend, trends to manage this human cloud which essentially include the hybrid workforce which essentially includes a lot more than of technology Uh, essentially includes a lot more of data so more employees working remotely increased use of employee data greater role of employer in um, as a social social safety net wider use of con- contingent workforce these are the top few trend which has come up so 
the um, I mean, since we are into this disruptive era, new impacts is critical skills are no longer synonymous with role. <coughs> I'll get into the critical skills in a different slides for you to understand as an HR, how can you focus on developing them? Because in this new normal, you have much stricter or much stringent opportunities to choose your talent for the next uh, leadership role. Some employees find more work more humanizing in the crisis. Others, other find it dehumanizing. These are the areas which the employers are setting up their war rooms to ensure that the silos in which the employees are working through uh, technology or whatever, their work format, which is suddenly changed so much, are redefined. Crisis response distingu distinguishes top tier employer brand. Let me tell you a po point. Do you remember the code of conduct of your employee uh, that was mentioned in your employee handbook? How much of that code of conduct is, is still valid today? The code of conduct was written for a captive environment. You you go to your office, you walk into walk, walk into a captive environment, and that's where your code of conduct was. Now, in a boundaryless, in an unbounded uh, organization, how does your code of conduct work? How does your employee citizenship work? How are you building the ownership? I ask you, th this is my question to you. Obviously, the penguin pen pendulum is swinging. Organization prioritize resilience as much as efficiency. Just as I said before, we are, I mean, look at it. The presentation was supposed to be e efficient, but we, we ended up making it resilient with efforts of people across different cities using technology. Crisis adds up to organization com complexities, straining design and culture and value proposition. This is the area which I will come to the end of, which, which I would want to take it towards the end of my presentation and how you can actually have a, a benchmark process, a benchmark um, process set, standard of operate, operating procedure to ensure that you are not just ready for next one year, three year, but any crisis or any challenges in future. Next slide, please. <coughs> Sorry. So these are the top few challenges, managing the hybrid workforce, which the HR is facing, lack of productivity. What was, in, what was considered to be productivity earlier has an entirely new definition of productivity. Not all of your team members will have their internet bandwidth high at the same point of time. Not all of the uh, employee, uh, employees or team member will have a uh, work uh, station entirely for them with the entire day. Most of them have their laptops or mobile phones being used by their kids. So the lack of productivity, how do you manage it? Obviously, I'm sure you're managing it. We will look into it. Lack of trust, obviously, when the productivity goes down. And since you are used to such, I mean, such a high degree of face time, the lack of trust is essentially not there. You need to have the person video on when the call is on. Why do you need the video on? Let the person not use the video. Let him have his food as he's listening to others, as he's talking, as he's contributing. But the entire lack of trust is redefined and that, that connects entirely to your code of conduct as an HR. You have to think through that in this time of uh, in this time where the trust is has gone is walking such a thin line, how do you still build the employee citizenship? Lack of accurate performance evaluation. How exactly are you evaluating the performance right now? Are you measuring the day-to-day -day, uh, operation? Are you measuring are uh, their results? Are you measuring their outputs? Or essentially, are you measuring just that they are resilient enough? To remain productive for the next few, few next cycle. Lack of accountability. That's it. Entirely your employee citizenship, which has to be redefined, and lack of monitoring. What exactly are you doing? This this brings us to the HR governance part. The governance HR governance. I'm sure you had a handbook on that. How much of that HR governance is relevant now? Uh, most of our HR governance uh, are definitely compliant with the Shops and Establishment Acts. But now the entire operations being delivered from home, how much of it is still relevant now? What are you doing to, to edit it? How, how, what are you doing to measure it? How, what are your checklists 
to identify that everything goes according to the new HR governance that you are forming. Next slide, please. <coughs> okay, so this is the exact shift which the HR has from strategic planning assumption for static planning assumption because you know at every morning you have your team uh, employees walking through the door by evening they would be out so all that entire productive hours your entire work gets delivered now it's a dynamic planning assumption remember that's the story that I told you right in the beginning wherein the it's not the it's not the general management team who was taking a decision it was employees who was coming up with disruptive ideas who were sharing how best to save cost on technology how best changes could be made to the product so that it's ready for the market so all those dynamic planning assumptions has to come in the entire uh, the entire flow of command which you already had in your organization the uh, the static or rather the the complete uh, bureaucracy that you had in your organization, I'm sure most of it has gone for a toss, given the kind of, uh, at least in, in the story that I shared, it was completely, it was completely a new organization that we saw it was forming since last few months. Location bound to talent everywhere, compensation restricted to compensation flexibility. Earlier, you had the choice to pay your employee as per your cash reserves right now, with your uh, entirely cash strap structure, what exactly are you offering now? We had several pa papers written. We uh, even had articles on uh, various media such as Live Mint and all, wherein they were talking about it's the uh, higher you go, the very variables are higher during the lockdown, which is why the employees are not happy. Essentially, yes, you might have to restrict the uh, the risk. I mean, you have to mitigate the risk at your end in terms of compensation, but your employees still will have to pay their bills, their school, school, the school fees to their kids and their rents and everything has to go on. So what kind of structuring are you managing in terms of compensation? Roles restrict planning to skill clusters. Remember the story wherein the management, uh, the general manager, the general management in the company did not think, but the team came up with a new product uh, implementation plan. That's exactly what has happened. The roles who had static uh, definition of our standard of operating procedures to them are completely skill clusters now. And these are the critical skill cluster which, which will define your leadership pipeline from now. This is exactly what the HR should get work to start working at. This, is, this, is, this should be their chief focus area for now. Digital initiatives to digital imperatives. Let me share a joke if you have not heard it so far. That uh, everybody says, if, if, if you, when people were asked, the company owners were asked, what changed, what brought in the dis digital disruption in your company? Is it your CIO, CTO, or uh, a new client? Everybody said it's COVID. So, yes, it's the digital imperative that we, we are right now. And what are we moving ahead to is what we need to, need to prepare. Rajesh, next slide, please. Evolving opportunities. This is the best area wherein uh, that entire dynamic planning assumptions, right? Whatever, um, I mean, yeah, exactly. COVID had pushed us to further accelerate the impact of strategic workforce planning. Where do we get started? Obviously. Uh, the, the story that I shared you about the product development company, that's exactly how the dynamic planning worked for them, assumption worked for them. Talent anywhere definitely worked even better. Rajesh, we move on to the next slide. I think we have uh, spoken much about this. Huh? Critical skill focus. Uh, HRs, employers, employee, whoever you are listening to me now, or even a fresh talent in the college who is preparing for a job, please look into this now essentially this is the focus that we have now as uh, earlier uh, if you want to be an hr you become an hr if you want to go to finance you become you get into finance right things were a lot more straight i mean lot lot more things were exactly as the crow flies it was straight line a linear but right now nothing is linear it is actually a a com combination of the ikigai area that you can see 
which includes the employee with critical skills, employees with critical workforce roles, and employees with in critical strategic roles. You have to have a combination of all these three. Uh, going back to the same uh, story which I shared in the beginning, the product development story. People who had critical skill in the team, people who were developing the product, they did not remain just to that, right? They suddenly had to understand how the product which was de designed for uh, one client had to be designed, suddenly designed for the entire market to, for, a, for a new pilot. So they moved from the employee with critical skills to employee with critical workflows. And that alone was not enough because they also had to have a critical strategic rules because once the pilot was uh, successful, they had to be able to pitch it to the client to get, get a new market. So that's where the Ikigai, that's where the new definition of criticality comes in. Do you understand it in your job? How best can you use the disruptions that are happening across include fast include the workflows that gets the product moving into the newer market and finally getting the client in the newer market is your critical skill focus. HRs in every role, the KRA, KPIK, uh, all those um, key result uh, definitions have completely are, are completely going to be redefined now. Do we understand the area of work that we have now? If you have any question, uh, please feel free to ask. I will definitely uh, we will I will definitely take it towards the end of it. Um, next slide, please, Rajesh. This is the new norm, right? This is where you uh, use the data to ensure uh, that you are moving from efficiency to a resilience. I understand every company will that ha have already, I mean, this is already September. We are already six months into it. So you already have your processes which can take you forward for next three months. But will that be enough? Is that is that auditing the implementation of all the areas that you have made is that going to make you resilient for any pandemic endemic or any kind of volatility in future how does this work so uh, this is this is one area i know it, it's just a little small probably if i leave the presentation with rajesh you can take it uh, take a look at it if, on on the i mean on the front of uh, on, on the top let me just have a quick view to it, understand business strategy and planned implication, analyze, analyze internal supply, assess external supply, analyze external demand and create a talent plan. This is exactly how, how you need to move ahead, actions to take, uh, common talent analytic barrier, barriers that you may face and the tab taboo change analytic that you might have to include. Rajesh, next slide, please. We are almost uh, 45 minutes into the session, so. I just realized it now. OK, now looking at a complete HR area, the core HR area, which uh, which is extremely crucial right now. Your team morale has gone down. Your team needs to be extremely over. Uh, I mean, overperforming right now. Your uh, cash strap situation can get better if only there's a huge spike in the revenue. How do you get the spike in the revenue? This is exactly where the entire self-awareness and the team performance part, which the only an HR can felicitate, comes in. So if you see the decision making, right, um, in terms of team or in, ter in terms of team or even in terms of self, uh, an individual increases when they are self-aware. How much, how much of an um, let me say an audit or a measure have you set in as an HR to identify who is who, which employee is aware of how much of their capabilities. Have you taken a test since the last six months of self-awareness within the employees? Have you taken, uh, have you mapped it to how it is, how it is implementing, how it is uh, felicitating the team performance? coordination and conflict management. These are the three areas which I would suggest, which definitely adds on to the probability of success, which I would suggest that you all take a, 
a complete uh, ana analysis and analyze it within the teams, analyze it for every individual who stands where, how uh, people with self-awareness stand in terms of decision quality, in terms of coordination, and in terms of conflict management, and then map it to the team performance of which kind of, which level of self-awareness is actually required going forward to build the resilience forward. Do you understand the, the test now? I can, uh, uh, I can, let's let's move on to the next slide. So this is the threshold for future of work. This essentially shows you, let me start with the employee quadrant first, right? The purpose and the meaning and super specialization and rewards are the chief chief area, right? Uh, we are taking as a we are taking this view as as a uh, we're taking a generic view. What the HR needs to do, we will come to it uh, to, towards the end. For the CEO, the capability building, energy management, managing conflict, conflict in demand, and employee organization is is the biggest thing. The CEO has to de decide that yes, in a cash trap situation where they cannot afford uh, a huge workforce, and yet they have to keep delivering. What, how, how would they balance between uh, not being able to pay everyone, yet need to keep everyone in the job in order to deliver to the market, to the clients? HR, drive sustainability and stability, guardian of the brand. Here comes the greatest challenge to HR. Your employer branding till January was the happiness factor of your employer. If I'm not wrong, you must have taken all those um, employer branding um, all, all those employer branding uh, initiatives, right? Um, with whichever organization you you associated with, I'm sure you got the, got awards for that. How much of it is still relevant today? And going forward, what exactly will define your uh, your employer brand? Remember this, the, uh, the the diagram wherein uh, the employees were showing that humanizing work actually has increased since the COVID started, whereas few employees felt it was just dehumanized. Here's comes the H here starts the HR job. How do you humanize the work in a post in such a in such an unbounded organization, in a boundaryless organization, in such a uh, vanishing geographic barriers? How do you essentially de completely humanize the work for them? I'm sure you have uh, you have done your best in terms of. Uh, helping em employees with their laptops, internet bandwidth, probably some kind of a support in terms of setting up a work workstation for them at home. Is that enough? Is that are those are those measures enough to humanize work? What are you humanize? What are you doing? What are you uh, what are you measuring every day to check the employee feels the work was humanized at the end of the day, working from home delivering the same amount or probably even a greater amount of job at a lesser pay, how are you going to build your employer brand in a time like this? Finally, an organization view, technology-led innovation, agility, nimble footness, sustainability, and value consciousness. These are the areas which the HRs have always talked about. Interestingly, the VUCA world and every uh, jargons which HR made and probably they were laughed at by the business leaders. This is the time that the, the HR shows up and actually implements the best strategies that takes you. I mean, uh, yes, your employee is suddenly not in your town. Your employee is sitting probably 100, 200 miles away from you, but there may not be a good internet bandwidth. But given the kind of payout that they have, it's not possible for them to have a lifestyle in here, or probably it's not even safer for them. They need to be closer to their family. So now in this kind of a situation, how do you get that employee to vote for you as the employer of choice? What, what exactly do you create? First, definitely is sensitization. Second is definitely a transparent communication. And third is employee ownership generation. The entire EVP that you had you had planned till January 2020, I'm sure has completely gone for a toss right now. Your employee value proposition stands completely redefined now. When the employees are working from, probably some of them are really happy that they are working from home. 
probably see uh, see it as a as a far better opportunity but for them who are not really equipped to perform to their best of capabilities from their home how are you humanizing work for them how are you creating an employer of choice brand a new evp along with them rajesh next slide please so this is the deal breaker in terms of uh, what are the uh, what are the areas right the new hybrid workforce would require one is just disruptive envisioning yes if you want to have your employees still on your payroll then these are the areas that they have to work upon disruptive envisioning multidimensional sense making orientation towards institutional building managing multidimensional dimensional diversity and personal credibility so these all adds up to your new employee value proposition as uh, definitely uh, the diagram says shares there's a fixed uh, a fixed percentage that they have already uh, already given it to it given to it that disrupt disruptive envisioning is the highest even uh, the story that i shared right in the beginning about the product company the disruptive envisioning of the employee was the was the core part it was defined right in the first month that who are the people who would who would be trusted going forward in the organization multi dimensional sense making yes they had to identify who quickly identify who would be ready for a, a zero cost pilot right now definitely orientation towards institution building right when they were they were they did not have their office environment to to deliver they were still working on a stringent <coughs> deadline to be able to bring the product into the market they did not know how long the lockdown would last so they wanted to make most of the pilot period and they wanted to win as much of the client confidence as they could so that's where the employee ownership and the employee citizenship was completely getting redesigned redefined rather multi dimensional diversity uh, we did not know i mean right now it doesn't matter who sits on the other side of the laptop or on the other side of the phone right and is delivering the work it's completely a uh, genderless organization right now so here st steps in the real diversity in in your earlier diversity programs i'm sure you had numbers you had uh, you had received awards you had run programs how much of it is relevant now none of it because everybody is working from home everybody is at home so Uh, yes thank you rajesh let's move on to the next slide it's okay it's okay let's move on to the next slide now comes balancing the sword this is essentially not for the hr but for every individual when you know that you are in a situation like this wherein yes you have done your best to deliver your uh, your job yet you do not know in next 3 months if you will have a job or not how do you focus yourself how do you keep yourself motivated how do you stay ahead of the curve how do you stay one up in your game so yes you need to focus on the self yes you need to focus on the system and essentially you need to understand the ecosystem uh for for yourself understanding obviously distribution with partners and client the uh, entire stints with the organization in the social na nation building global roles outside own uh, functional domain you have to work on this at your individual level on a system le level what do you need navigating in the industry networks to the question shape and shape and that changes a perspective participating in the relation in the in the national organization areas okay so environmentally you have to remain intelligent enough to identify that uh, not just your own organization but everyone in your segment or probably suppose you are in consulting are there any better opportunities that could come up from manufacturing given that they would require someone with your roles and capabilities quickly to <coughs> scale up once the productivity is high so it's the entire environmental intelligence that you need to build and finally the ecosystem how the companies are working to group together uh, there had been one of the one of the uh, processes which is which is becoming uh, fast which is becoming uh, which is becoming really popular these days and that is talent sharing if you if you say it, 
uh, anything about talent sharing before 2020, probably most of the organization would say that, no, we cannot. We have a huge data code policy. We have a code of conduct, this and that. We cannot have, we cannot share our talent. But right now, companies are collaborating in terms of managing cost, in terms of utilizing the ta talent to their highest capabilities. So do you, would you be able to understand that kind of an ecosystem to understand where exactly your critical remember the de design of the critical skill focus which we did discuss in that in the in the new de collaborative eco ecosystem where does your critical focus stand which are the roles that are emerging and you can take it up this entire slide is for the individuals to understand and prepare for the future <coughs> rajesh next slide please This, these are the com uh, compliance challenges. We, we have moved from the employer, uh, the co code of conduct, and uh, the entire compliance that were based on Shops and Establishment Act. Going forward, how would the Shops and Establishment Act be defined in terms of a remote work, right? Obviously, this includes the hybrid, this includes gig economy this includes this this also has to include the man and machine hybrid structure so what are the regulatory compliances that you need to you need to look at uh gigs or hybrids right whatever that is being uh, being employed right now what are the basic compliances that you have to do what are the operational risk where are uh, where are these authorities going to audit you and figure out that no you did not fall across according to the um, according to the guidelines are you still in a condition to uh, to offer those 44 days of annual forced leaves where the empl employees can cannot encash and cash it and they have to take it they are anyhow working from home or are you creating some kind of a measure which which will be which will be beneficial in terms of your company revenues and also be aligned to the government of the authorities. Yes, there would be a lot of changes in the in the laws, the, the kind of measures that, that are being taken by the government. We would see them announcing probably in, 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 in due course of time. Information risk, that's the biggest risk. <coughs> Most of the companies who were not really ready for the future of work situation, a telecommute, are uh, facing this challenge, right? Suddenly we see, we get up in the morning and we see most of the companies banning Zoom, right? Because uh, it is not completely secure. What, how are you managing your data? What are the new measures? What are the new governances that you are putting in? Essentially, these three areas would have an impact in the new HR governance that you're defining. Next slide, please. Rajesh, next slide. Yeah. Uh, approach to solutions. So this is your, this is your probably top few areas, but there can, these are your solutions will not, not be limited to these few. You have to understand and make up uh, for the, uh, for the entire population. Understand who is essentially looking at a a, a short term area now because even in the it's not just gig, it's also hybrid, right? In, uh, even in hybrid structure, the jobs are still not guaranteed for next one year or next 18 months. So in that kind of a structure, how do you build the employee uh, trust? It's not just the trust for you on employed. It also has to be the employee's trust on you. What type of packages and more suitable gigs that you can identify for your contingency workforce, for your hybrid workforce, and for the workforce, which is going to be a hybrid between man and the machine? Can you create a single focus for the gig specific issues? Most of the people who are working remote, the, the hybrid workforce, what exactly have you chartered the entire uh, challenges that they are facing? What are your measures? Are these a part of your measures and audit in, in terms of your HR governance going forward? Focus on onboarding and integration. Obviously, uh, orientation right now will will always remain the greatest area because you remember the the uh, the diagram which shows the decision making and assumption planning which was highest and personal credibility all that all those areas those are the areas which you might have to audit on a regular timely manner given that 
you have to obviously, as we discussed, that you will have to map it, the self-awareness degree to the uh, performance of the team. Your entire onboarding and integration moves into a new program called orientation, which you probably had only once uh, earlier for once in your uh, in your HR process. Now the orientation has to be on repeat because the employees are remote, because the employees are hybrid, and because there are many more areas that you're trying to build a resilience. For, for a certain duration of time, I believe the orientation has to go on till we are strong in that area wherein it doesn't matter what kind of pandemic, endemic, or any volatility comes in. We are the VUCA world. We are the ones who, who can take on any, any challenges. Let's, let's say tomorrow we have a technological challenge. Will we shut down our companies just because suddenly some technology is down or suddenly the internet is attacked, right? For a short, even if it is for a short duration of time, can the business come to a standstill? Can your HR governance, can your HR orientation include measures for the employees not to panic in that situation and have certain disruptive measures to be able to still deliver the job and ensure the productivity is on? Rajesh, next slide, please. <coughs> okay, we are almost time. Okay, next, next, next slide, next slide. Just move on to the next slide. So this is my story. Uh, well, it, this was uh, me in my final year at XLRI, wherein we were shown a, a presentation on HR communities, which I, uh, which I did not really appreciate because I found that that kind of an idea too stringent, too strict for any anybody in the in the community. So I had a discussion with my faculty, Dr. Madhuka Shukla, who said that, well, you're an HR student, you're not supposed to like what you see, you're supposed to build what you want. And I said, what, what, would, what would that be, sir? He gave me an idea that I loved. It was his idea, definitely. He mentioned that an HR community has to be open, anonymous, free to use, worldwide. Everything should be made available there. Um, I just love that idea. Any Anybody, he said that anybody, anywhere, Facing a problem should be come and should be able to come and ask a question and have experts worldwide offering them the solution. I love that idea. So I started since I'm not an engineer, I'm an MBA student. I started looking for it on the internet and I found a website which was doing just that. Uh, essentially, at that point of time in 2006, it was marginally small. This was a point of time which, where the community or media tech world had not arrived. So in terms of community, all that we had was Google Groups, which has been taken off off um, charts right now, it is not even there, or Yahoo groups. So uh, the entire concept was evolving, the entire, the entire uh, segment was, we were almost pioneering. But since I loved that product and I saw the capability in it, I saw the potential, I started, I joined it as a member, just as you might have joined Facebook as a member on day one. And I started creating the areas that I knew had a potential to grow. Essentially that uh, led to the, I mean, led to the first offline meet in Pune, which uh, which increased. I mean, which was I'm I'm so grateful. Was so successful that uh, we had many more offline chapters across India, even internationally in many countries. And that's when I got connected with the person who was building the website. And we decided that yes, now right now, uh, since we are fresh into our jobs, we will continue to work. But essentially, we will. Give, a, give up our jobs once this have an revenue enough to get us going and we will build this full time. So it, for the next four years, I used to moonlight, create offline chapters, events, uh, meeting people. I met, I remember I met uh, many men in, uh, way back in I think 2009 or 2000, 2009. Uh, and I told her about this community. Back then she was with Bloomberg. It was a great moment for me because uh, even in 2009, she said that it's it's a great idea. Wow, it is being it is working. We were covered on CNBC hours. It it was it was a it was a glorious story. By 2010, once the revenue was good enough, I joined in. I was a partner there. 2016, we were on the top of Alexa HR internet ranking for HR communities. Interestingly, we were ahead of Payscale and new, even US government website in terms of internet ranking. 2016, I received this day this particular day the picture that you see happened to me i received this award i um, which definitely redefined and completely changed my world eventually i uh, post this i formed uh, navomita.com 
which is a platform for evangelism. The uh, evangelize, evangelize product, uh, brands, uh, ideas, concepts, initiatives. Rajesh, could you move on to the next slide, please? So it's a, this is our multi-level reach. We, uh, we are not unichannel. We, 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 we reach through different, uh, obviously, there are not all apps that we are using right now. Uh, most of them are, have been taken uh, off, uh, off the charts. But then our reach remains pretty high. We reach more than a million members. We have created communities uh, with footprints of 20 million, 10 million, 6 million. It's been a great journey forming communities of different interest different areas of practices and products we have worked with financial uh, financial institutions retail bank investment uh, i mean say say it as name a segment and probably we have worked it worked in there rajesh your next um, slide please so this is what evangelism is evangelism is about uh, about a process where, which starts where marketing ends uh, obviously, your marketing is entirely about what your product is, and evangelism makes sure that your your end user, your customer, tells you what your product is. Remember that Palaji story, which I told you right in the beginning. Uh, the company on the verge of closure had the user user telling them that it's not a biscuit; it's a survival food. That's what evangelism is. Uh, we do it without any disruption, without any uh, any such um, any such uh, strange measures. We do it through our own strategies and we help every client, every uh, company find the ambassadors who tells them or users who tells them why their product should be there in the market, why, they're, why they're, they should they pay, pay, why a user should pay for the product. Thank you, Rajesh. Next slide, please. Rajesh, next slide, please. Yeah, so this is what I am a part of um, other than running my own company. I am a national chairman to CIMSME, which is a confederation of Indian middle, small, micro enterprises. We include every um, every uh, uh, company which which uh, which which interestingly has joined hands with us. We have grown. It's been six months in uh, with this uh, with this confederation, and in six months, I have seen the organization grow almost into three hundred percent. We have we are a section eight company. We um, we have uh, signed six agreements with state governments who are extremely aggressive about bringing the industry back, bringing the workforce back, getting the revenues higher even than before. CIS SME have these different areas. One is global leadership program, which is a part of GCBID. Nishta is the uh, is the conglomerate for every. Uh, it's it's a domain for every company to come and. Uh, share it's a platform I, if you're watching this i invite you to join cimsme if you just go to the website you will see this you, you don't it, the, this confederation unlike every other confederation doesn't require you to pay a lot of a uh, lot of your hard-earned money it's you can join for free there are great programs that we are organizing almost uh, almost every now and then, even now, we are we have an ongoing program called Manthan, wherein we have government authorities, export import authorities, uh, agencies across the world, helping business owners rebuild and create a complete bounce back uh, for their business. In this confederation, I can say for sure, since I'm a part of it and I've seen it happening, we just don't build our own business. We build the businesses for others as well. So from self to ecosystem, the the diagram that I showed, uh, well, we, we have implemented it and it's working very successfully. We had a great low global leadership program. We had an amazing EDP program, which was so successful uh, that we, we, are, we, we, were, we are bringing the series back. And we have so much of demand for it. Uh, Rajesh, next slide, please. This is the area that I my I think you, it might interest you as an HR. This is an initiative by um, obviously Mahindra SSG, Equinip Capital and Entoro, and of course my company, wherein we are helping organization transform the entire the social and the workplace transform framework, transformation framework in a post-COVID world. What is happening there right now? What are we doing with this initiative? Is essentially after COVID. The companies, as they are opening up, 
they are they have already since the last six months they already had their war room set they already had their processes set they are uh, working 70 percent and 70 30 percent in a hybrid on-site off-site uh, structure however yet once they open their up offices they are still facing knee-jerk situation wherein they are not prepared for a lot of areas uh, they might take certain measures but through this initiative what we bring to you is a we help you we help you with a checklist which is which is benchmarked with the best of the companies we have already spoken to 40 companies who's shown great interest to, to to this kind of an initiative the checklist helps you identify the areas that you need to work out it's a yes or no of audit of what you have done which is followed by a complete um, a complete handholding through what areas that you need to work in your own particular premise or your own particular organization in terms of building resilience the the movement from building efficiency to resilience is what we are working through interestingly we are lo not looking at just one area mahindra being a um, a consulting uh, partner and they have their best infrastructure intelligence are bringing that in along with the with security services consulting equinip capital and el toro being investors they are completely offering uh, a, a completely financial me measure uh, coverage which prepares you not just for a cash trap situation now or in 18 months but even future areas and obviously uh, i bring in the hr core areas the areas that i have already talked about building the hr governance building the new uh, the new employer brand which would actually matter for your employees to humanize the work in this hybrid workforce uh, interestingly we have received a great a uh, great response from the companies in case you are if you're interested to be a part of it please uh please reach out to me i'm uh, you have my twitter handle there my email id is easy it's navamita at navamita.com write to me reach out to me we would definitely want to understand what we are doing is uh we are helping them get helping the large corporates companies get up to the speed in terms with uh, along with being benchmarked with the industry. So you, it's not just a half-baked work that uh, probably some of the, um, I mean, some of the great mind might do. It's a completely foolproof plan, which will, which will help you test of, stand the test of the time, not just for COVID, but any kind of challenges in future. Rajesh, next slide, please. These are the few brands that I have, um, I have been, uh, I, I've been grateful to have served so far. And yes, there are many more. I couldn't put all the brands there. That is last slide. Yes. So uh, that with that, we come to an end. I have taken 13 minutes extra of your time. I hope um, I hope I, I made sense. Uh, we are in a crisis situation. And let me go back to us uh, to the same the same topic which I started with, which is which is the philosophy of crisis, which says there, there was a cycle before the crisis. There is a cycle in the crisis and there will always be a cycle after the crisis. What you take from each cycle prepares you for the next. So um, in this kind of situation, I would all, I would want all you, all you delegates, attendees and great people listening to me, uh, look into the mirror and say mirror, mirror on the wall. I'll stand up each time I fall, whether I have to crawl, limp, or even crawl. I would stand and I would stand tall. Thank you so much for listening to me. It's been almost an hour. Uh, yes, Rajesh, you can close with the last, last slide. Thank you so much. Uh, let me look into the q, q &A. Um OK, uh, deal breakers. Yes, Rajesh, um, go ahead. So uh, I just want to uh, uh, share an idea with you. Uh, this event is sponsored by Wacom India. So you have used to work on, uh, I guess, uh, so you can just- Yes, the product is extremely exciting, right? It's a beautiful product. It completely allows you to use your uh, your laptop as a whiteboard, right? Uh, the problem that with people like us who are so used to um, you, our office environment, we can't talk until and unless we start using a, um, a marker on the whiteboard and we have to put everything on the whiteboard, right? We have to draw, figures, we have to put in numbers, we have to connect the dots. We need a whiteboard for every kind of a communication. 
and Wac Wacom's product was excellent. I I I mean I I am all um, all I mean really I have all praise for it. It actually allows you to use your uh, your laptop as a whiteboard and explain you you explain your ideas a lot lot better way. Okay, so uh, we can uh, go for the questions now. Just uh, we take I think five minutes more. Okay. Um, can you read some of the questions for me, please? Uh, my screen is getting stuck. Sure. Um, uh, there is a question from uh, Athara Bhaskaran. Uh, can you please describe the uh, deal breakers? What does disruptive in envisioning mean? What does multi-dimensional sense making mean? Okay. Kathara, Kathara, thank you so much for raise, raising this question. Disruptive envisioning. You remember the story that I told you about the product, product uh, company, the technology company right in the beginning, who suddenly had their client telling them, uh, canceling their product, canceling the project at the last minute before they were ready to ship it. The, the team members, right? Uh, are, it's, it's not the, the top rung, but the lowest rung of the organization came up with the idea that the product would can be customized a little and uh, be prepared for a greater market. That was disruptive envisioning. That's exactly why I shared that story. It was absolutely a, a display of disruptive envisioning by those product uh, developers who probably knew it all while that the product is good, not just for one client, but the entire market. But the COVID situation pushed them to actually share that idea and multi-dimensional sense making. Yes, when they were developing the product for a larger market, then they were read, they're reading the product for a pilot uh, at a zero cost pilot for the, for the larger market. They were also keeping it in mind that after pilot, why should the client say that, yes, I'm ready to use it. So uh, they were including clauses such as, uh, well, if you shift from your existing product to this new one, uh, it, it will actually be a zero cost thing. Even if you have a binding contract with your existing vendor or your service provider, this is this is the uh, feature. Uh, these are the services that we are offering you so much for free that cost can be completely negated and it's a zero cost transfer for you. So that's the kind of multidimensional sense making which they had to do. The sales team could only go and sell at the last point. These thought processes came from those techies, those developers, right? So disruptive uh, envisioning and multidimensional sense making, I think I have explained it with, with an example. Uh, there's another question we can take maximum. Uh, Sarthak has asked, uh, my question is, what do you believe in building a community of college students where only they get a chance to work on industry-based projects, micro jobs? Okay, Sarthak, um, do you remember I told you about CIMSME? We are uh, launching a product soon, a program soon, wherein we uh, we already had an EDP program, and the EDP program is going to be relaunched again on because it's it's of high demand. And the EDP program was exactly about this, right? We were uh, it's college student, yes. We we call them the job ready workforce, right? And it doesn't. And interestingly, this pandemic has been a level playing field for baby boomers for everyone. Because since you are, since you're geographically uh, neutralized, right? It doesn't matter where, where exactly you are. It's your critical skill focus. Remember the diagram that I told you that matters when, when it comes to being hired for a, even a micro job. So through our EDP programs and through our, even the, uh, the future programs at CIMSME, we are connecting these dots. We are creating programs wherein we bring, bring in the companies we talk about the issues that uh, requires to be uh, that requires to be troubleshoot uh, requires to be resolved, and we also offer the opportunities for both the parties to join hands and find the best of the solution for each of them. If you are willing, I would request please join CIMSME. Uh, you will find it in the website, or you may write to me. I I will I would love to connect to all these programs. I'm looking forward to uh, hear from you all. My coordinates are definitely navomita at navomita.com or please visit my website, which is navomita.com uh, for, for more details on this and connect to me on this. I'm looking forward to see you all there and make sure that the dialogue that we had today 
the brainstorming that we had today, and I'm so grateful that you all sat through the initial disruption that we had uh, that reaches some kind of a uh, takeaway. I hope I have uh, created thinking points for you now. I would love to see how you are implementing it at your work. I would, I'm waiting to hear how it is adding on to your success and how we can, uh, we can uh, just as I shared about the social transformation initiative, through that initiative, how we can help your organization develop better and we can, we can get you ground up. Not just for in a post-COVID situation, but in every volatile situation or any any kind of challenges in future. Uh, one last thing I will uh, request to ma'am. Uh, this question is from my end, basically. Um, yes. So, well, this is a really wonderful session uh, till now we ha have actually. So ma'am, uh, regarding the same question of Wacom actually, do you think this uh, this Wacom one tab is is it it is uh, useful to those people who are working from home now. Essentially, see, uh, this is where the human humanizing part, which I mentioned in my presentation, comes in. HRs who are listening to, to me right now, you all have set up the uh, the bare minimum for your employee to get going for since the last six months. Going forward, they would need far greater support to deliver the work properly. So that's exactly where online screen boarding, which Wacom offers, comes in. Right, where, where exactly uh, a CEO when he is taking a session, or a product manager when he is uh, when he is organizing a blue blue jeans network, or even a Zoho network, Zoho call, he needs to use a a whiteboard. How does he use a whiteboard? Does he keep an actual whiteboard behind him, go back and start writing on it, or can he use something as smart as what Wacom, Wacom is presenting and that as a product, if rolled out to the to, to the entire employee base, uh, definitely would humanize and would create that kind of a professional environment which they had uh, in in their offices. What these kind of devices do for the most is they uh, they create that the same kind of office environment in the home environment, right? You may not have every employee with enough of a space to have their own completely room free to them, right? It may not be possible for every employee to hang a whiteboard behind them, but just a, a dashboard, a table, right? Uh, which can accommodate a, a, a laptop or a MacBook, can accommodate that Wacom tablet as well. And that's exactly the space that you re require to get your employees going. How smart is that? Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for your all support. And again, it's a really wonderful session. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Please visit uh, Nabnita uh, at underscore smiles. Please visit her and uh, Sarthak and other people. Sarthak also asked another question. And uh, please visit her, nabnita.com. It's her website. Uh, they are doing a lot of activities actually, and those are very much relevant to in the, this current scenario. Uh, please uh, visit wacom.com for any product related queries. Uh, we really thank you, Wacom India, for supporting this event. And visit us at UFMAG uh, in Instagram for the more updates and future act events. Thank you, ma'am. We can close the session if you. Thanks uh, a lot. Thanks a lot. I am grateful to every attendee, delegate, and leaders listening to me till now. I can't thank our team youth enough for all the support and the honor of of uh, delivering this session today. I'm I'm honored being a part of your series. Thank you for for considering me good enough for Youth Magazine's session. And I wish the team all the best. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. We are looking forward Have to work you again. Certainly, you. we will. We will. Have a sure. great day. Bye-bye.